And just like that, we are back with another Limitless video. A couple things that we're gonna be doing in this video. One of them is we're gonna try and see how many back-to-back -back passes where we're attempting the 100 mile per hour pass and see how many we can do before the motor reaches the maximum threshold that I am comfortable with, is, which is going to be about the 80 degrees Celsius mark. And then the second thing that we want to accomplish is we actually want to be able to document 100 miles per hour while keeping the car on all four wheels. We were not able to do that in our first initial pass that exceeded the 100 mile per hour mark, which is about 161 kilometers per hour or so. All right, we got 8S hooked up. Time to send it. Don't tell me that it's got lost. Yep, that easy and it is lost. Check how much we got here. 119 on the clock. Let's give her another run. What do you think it did there? 137. Okay, let's go for another run. What do you think it did there, guys? That was a good pass. Up to 144 and it's still cooking. We have a truck coming out, so let's give her a quick pass. Let's see how our motor is doing. I'm gonna pop my hand under there and just see how hot it is. I know from my first run, we are not getting much heat built up in the motor from this type of run. So I can rest my hand on there. It's probably around the 58 degree mark. Back to back runs, let's go for another one. got a little squirrely there at the top end. Let's bring it in. One forty four. I could hear the fan on the speed control. Let's go for another one. 
So here we're just checking temperatures and seeing how many runs we can actually do here with this beast of a system. temperature test here on the motor okay so we're probably pushing now up about 65 degrees Celsius up to 70 and that's where I'm gonna call the amount of passes here so whatever amount we got that's what we are seeing we're at 144 kilometers an hour I have not been able to hold it full power just because of the space that I'm running in here just doing an inspection here, I notice that the motor is actually loose. Not sure how the heck this happened. Um, gonna take a look, it's more than likely the fasteners here that I'll be looking at. See if they just need to be tightened up. So it looks like those fasteners ended up loosening up on me. I gotta reapply Loctite there. I'm looking down the street both ways. The truck is gone, the van is gone. It's looking good. All right, now that the motor's cooled off, let's go plug her back in and do a couple more passes. We'll do two passes and see what we get. And those motors are, all those wires are off to the side. Now we can plug these guys back in. Body clips are in, speedo's active, power is active, grab the controller. All right, limitless. Here we go. We're straight and we're gonna make a pass here. There's our first pass after our very first run, our set of runs there. We'll see what we get. I think we should be a little bit above 140. <laughs> 144, we didn't change. Let's go out again. square. Let's go for it. That's the first spin. if we get flat spots. So if I do that on a radio controlled jet, you get flat spots all over the tires and it becomes really bad. Here we're okay on a car. Very big difference. Of course we're not gonna we're not gonna be any faster. I'll do a quick motor temp check here. 
I can go out for another pass. We'll get one more pass in on this battery and that'll do it. Straight and let's bring her back. Okay, and straight back in. I was easy on the brake, so we got quite a far ways away from us here. I have the brake setting set to about 30%, and that seems to work. I don't want to slam the brakes on and, and have any issue there. So we're 159, we're right at that 100 mile per hour mark. I don't, I think it's 161 or 162. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's a hundred mile an hour pass right there, essentially. And I held into it for quite a bit. So I'm interested in seeing what the data log is going to look like. Let's take it apart. So the big question of our arrow that I put back on. I believe that the arrow is making a difference in two ways. Our first way is the arrow is not allowing us to hit the top speed that we hit before, more than likely because there's a lot more drag, which is understandable and that's okay right now. Um, the next thing is, is it's making a difference and keeping this on the ground. Obviously we don't need this much on the front end and we certainly don't need that much on the rear end. Those are the next things to look into. So let's go ahead, unplug it, and let this guy cool down. Okay, here are the last two passes here that we're gonna make. We're cooled down to about 40, 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. That should be quite a bit. Lots of room, here we go. All right, that was a good pass, let's see what we got. I'm expecting that that was around 160. I didn't clear the GPS log, so we'll have to see if it's exceeding it. Otherwise we won't know if it's a couple kilometers lower. That was a mistake. 159, so we don't know what we got, of course. So let's get in here and figure out how to clear that again. Okay, so we'll get the speed of our last pass here and that'll be it for today. All right, let's see what we did on that run. That run felt really good, like it had to have beat 159. Took it out pretty far there. As I mentioned earlier, I got 30% on the brakes, although I could press a lot more. Oh, there we are, 164. So that's a tried, test, and true 100 miles an hour with the full arrow on and i held it for quite some time and we're going to be able to look at the data log and find out that 164 how long i had to hold it in order to achieve that but that just goes to show that the the calculator there the spreadsheet it's working to find the gearing for a setup that allows you to hit the target speed and no more and this allows us to keep that motor even more cool for only 100 miles an hour 
I don't think people can do, you know, six passes at 100 miles an hour on typical common motors. A couple points that I wanted to make in addition to everything that I said within the video there is when I have a few cars that are sitting downstream just idling, literally the drivers are sitting in the car and just waiting for whatever reason. I'm making my pass but I do not want to actually allow my radio control car to get past or near them. So what I'm doing is I'm slamming on the brakes ahead of time which kind of plays significantly in the whole entire role there for the pass. I'm getting into the acceleration more aggressively, slamming my brakes on earlier, and really not allowing the car to ride wide open for an extended period of time, which is obviously affecting the entire pass result for me. Once I ended up having those vehicles leave, then I can open up the car for a lot longer, and then you've seen how much further I'm taking the car for my braking zone. And this leads right into my first issue where I, a couple times during the video, I probably cut that section out where there's an extended period of time because I lost radio signal. I actually had to make a few steps towards the car. I got to hold the radio up in the air. This is a very first for me when it comes to range. I've never had this issue in any of my past speed runs. So I'm not sure why when I'm only hitting 100 miles an hour, I'm running into range issues with the current spectrum radio that I have. I'm pretty sure that my old Futaba radio had a long longer range on uh, 75 megahertz FM. So very interesting stuff right there. As a result, if you have any suggestion that you wanna throw me in the comment section below, let me know what that could be. I'm gonna be taking a look at range boosters and other radios and see exactly what's out there. Not yet ready to pull the trigger, but if I am looking at getting uh, up to higher top speeds, which is definitely what I wanna do with the Limitless, I'm gonna need a lot more room. At least from what I remember, I'm gonna need a lot more room in order to do that. It's going to make it a lot easier to make these higher speed passes. Another item is I want to get rid of the GPS that is located at the rear currently of my Arma Limitless. I want to replace it with more of a standard up-to-date GPS unit that everyone's kind of using these days. A few of you have messaged me and suggested the Sky RC unit. I believe that's the, the company name there and it looks like a solid unit. I have looked into it and it provides a decent amount of features and whatnot. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to probably go down the path or that route, pick that up, and I want to try out that zero to 60 mile per hour uh, feature that comes on that unit as well. Throw that on there, see what the limitless can do in terms of that zero to 60 mile per hour mark, and then maybe even try another couple combinations of zero to some speed there. That would be quite interesting. And just for giggles, I want to throw it into one of the jets and see what kind of zero to 60 mile per hour time an electric ducted fan jet would be. Uh, that would be kind of interesting to see, especially going through the different styles and types that I have. So a lot of cool stuff to look at in the future here on the channel. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching guys.